about difficult topics that impact us all. With this in mind, our mission statement at KBLA Talk 1580 is simple. To create an inclusive platform that promotes civil discourse through honest dialogue and encourages personal growth among our listeners so they can become the active agents of change. Our vision is to establish ourselves as the premier radio network with relevant programming across the beloved community, connecting people through shared experiences and collective power for lasting impact beyond these challenging times. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. You are now in Big Tobacco's fantasy land. Welcome. It's a healthier world where they want you to believe that vaping makes quitting cigarettes a breeze. Never mind the evidence that vaping leads to using both. And if you're younger, even better. Teens who vape are three times likelier to use cigarettes. In Big Tobacco's fantasy land, the deadliest industry is your friend. Big Tobacco's idea of smoke-free is a dangerous fantasy for us all. See reality at undo.org. Today is August 22nd, 2023 for Deutsch Taco Bell Radio. Spot title E8, Rolled Chicken Tacos, Dipping Sauces, Radio 30, at ID TCGRCH33000. Stereo model compatible mix with Tupac. What makes Taco Bell's rolled chicken tacos so good? Is it the shredded marinated all-white meat chicken? Well, yeah, obviously. But it's also the three amazing dipping sauces to choose from. Spicy ranch, warm nacho cheese sauce, and house-made daily guacamole. Now, if you need a third reason, their white corn tortillas are fried to golden perfection, which everyone knows is the best kind of perfection. Order rolled chicken tacos on the Taco Bell app. Get one dip for two pack or two dips for four pack at participating Taco Bell stores for a limited time only while supplies last. Spilled your drink? Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up spills quicker. And each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less than the leading ordinary brand. So you can get back to your night. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. The conversation continues right now, right now, right now with right now. Dominique De Prima on First Things First. First. Things first. It's time to set our intentions, set our self-care, and find our focus. This is Mindful Mondays with Sahara Ali on KBLA Talk 1580. What a beautiful way to start our Monday. She is a meditation instructor. She's a sound bath expert, a life coach, an astrologer, yoga teacher, (laughs) and so much more. My friend and colleague, Sahara Ali with Mindful Mondays. Good morning. Good morning, Dominique, and good morning, KBLA family. Welcome to Mindful Mondays, where we get our minds right for the week by setting positive intentions to honor our mind and body through meditation, prayer, and affirmation. As we step unapologetically into our week, being on purpose with our faith, truth, wisdom, and power. Today on Mindful Monday Meditation, I'd like to challenge you to sit with yourself, opening your heart and mind to step into your purpose, reframing where you're standing in your life at this time as we begin to shift season. 
Sufi mystics believe that the heart is an ocean and the body is the beach. The heart is the knower of truth, not the mind. The mind only presents possibilities aiding free will choice, whereas the heart knows truth. Living from truth reveals our soul's wisdom, aiding the quality of our existence unfolding our fullest potential. So today, our Mindful Monday meditation, we're going to check in with our heart, calling on the ocean of love within, calling on the ocean of love within to set a new perspective as we shift forward, unapologetically picking up our power, opening our minds to listen, allowing innate wisdom to guide our hearts and minds to the ocean of truth that already exists within. So stop what you're doing for a moment. Take a breath. Close your eyes. Giving yourself permission to be here now. Placing your hands over your heart. Listen to your breath as it slowly moves in through your nose, out of your mouth. Three or four times. Just slowly breathe in and give a nice sigh. Exhale through your mouth. Feeling your heartbeat in your hands. Listen to your breath as it slowly moves in and out of your body. Feel your heartbeat and the movement of your chest rising on the inhale, lowering on the exhale. Find inner peace. Find stillness. Find the stillness within receiving divine guidance. Mm, Sahara. We're having a Mercury retrograde moment here. We're having, uh, <laughs> I know we're in the, we're in the, what you call the shadow phase until the end of the month, but we're having trouble hearing your phone. It's so very Mercury retrograde, and I want to make sure that we are able to hear every word and start our week off with our Mindful Monday affirmation, the guided meditation that you always give to us um, in all of the wisdom that you share as we move through the shadow phase, which is post-Mercury retrograde, but certainly can be just as challenging. Okay, sorry about that, Sahara. I hate to interrupt your flow. That's okay. It's a part of going in within and, you know, and transcending whatever is placed before us because our heart holds the truth. So let's get back to inhaling and centering ourselves and grounding ourselves and being in this moment. You know, life is a transitory experience, and we learn how to transcend in every second, every moment. So inhale and exhale. Reframe your energy. Ground yourself. Be here now. Give yourself permission to be inspired by the true potential of your heart, to connect to the wisdom within. And exhale, releasing complacency, embracing a greater expression of yourself and hold this truth within yourself. Inhale, unconditional love, asking the question, am I living my heart's fullest potential? Am I being on purpose in my steps? Am I allowing myself to shine? Exhale, clarity. Ready, open to receive your soul's ocean waves of positive possibilities and infinite possibilities. Inhale. See new beginnings unfolding in your life here and now. Allow your nervous system, your whole body to upload infinite possibilities and new beginnings. Exhale. Release feeling aligned to your greatness in the grace of your heart and mind, holding light in your body. Inhale, receiving, ready to live your God-given talent, manifesting new dreams and miracles every moment, every second of your life as you step forward unapologetically. Exhale, remember, all change starts with the wisdom of self. All change starts with the wisdom of self. 
Inhale, embrace fulfillment, unfolding the path of your highest good, knowing that it's safe for you to dream, that it's safe for you to be in your power. Exhale, believe you are here to serve a higher purpose, and it's safe for you to be authentic in your expression. Inhale, taking the biggest breath you've had all morning. Hold that breath. Connect with your heart. Be in this moment. And as you exhale, receive our Mindful Monday affirmation for the week. Just breathe, relax, and listen. Today, I listen to the wisdom of my heart. Open to receive an ocean of infinite possibilities with grace and ease. Today, I listen to the wisdom of my heart, open to receive an ocean of infinite possibilities with grace and ease. Sit with that. Today, listen to the wisdom of your heart. Open your mind and your spirit to receive an ocean of infinite possibilities with grace and ease. Thank you, Dominique. Have a smiley, Miles and the 1580 KBLA family. Have an unapologetic, mindful week, knowing all change starts with the wisdom of self. Okay, since I brought it up, Sahara Ali, before I let you go and go on about your busy Monday, um, the shadow period, like, okay, so Mercury goes retrograde, then it goes direct, and then I always thought it was like three days until it was cool, but y'all, now y'all, all y'all astrologer types be talking about a week, two weeks, and I am like, what? How long is it? Mercury? It's like, there's more time when we're not dealing with, I mean, there's more time dealing with Mercury retrograde than not dealing with it, because, um, I mean, it was over, I think, the 16th, and now this, what you guys call the shadow period, goes until the end of the month. Is that right? Yes. So all retrograde planets, if you think about a spinning top, it wobbles. So when Mercury goes direct, it wobbles. It wobbles for two weeks. And so in that wobbling, it's called the shadow period. And that shadow period gives us an opportunity to readjust our psyche and for the energy and the earth plane to readjust, to move direct so that you can see and feel and go into the world behind your eyes to reap the benefit of Mercury going retrograde. All retrograde planets gives us an opportunity, as you said, to go into the shadow, to go into the world behind our eyes to reframe where we're standing. And also, like I was explaining to my friend the other day, is that we need retrograde planets so that we can be still for a moment, but also so that spirit in the universe can set up things behind the scene. So when it's direct, we can step right into our greatness. So if there's been a delay, if there's been a setback, if there's been um, something that fell off, it's divine purpose. And so we have these retrograde planets for a divine purpose, to allow us to reframe, but also to allow the universe to set things up that we are asking and that we are praying for. Uh, You know, leave it to Sahara. She's always going to have a good spin. Shadow period means go to the space behind your eyes (laughs) and work it out. I love that. Uh, Love, love, love that. You always have a way of making things positive. Thank you, Sahara. Thank you, Dominique. And thank you, KBLA family. I truly appreciate all of you guys. Absolutely. Um, What a great way to get our week started, setting our intentions, being mindful of not just the perils, but also the opportunities spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and universally universally yeah universally hey it's a perfect time to call me 800-920-1580 looks like uh, biden has got those five folks five americans out of iran and there's breaking news about that uh person about a person of interest in the shooting of that sheriff's deputy that we were talking about last hour that and so much more when we come forward kbla talk 1580 Say the quiet part out loud. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. 
House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries says House Republicans are in a battle that is hurting hardworking American taxpayers. Speaking on ABC's This Week, the New York Democrats said that House Republicans are in the middle of a civil war that is also limiting the ability to solve issues on their behalf. He went on to add that House Democrats are going to keep trying to find a common ground with their opponents. Black California lawmakers say there's still some resistance when it comes to black people receiving reparations. One member of the California Reparations Task Force, Reginald Jones Sawyer, who is black, tells NBC News, quote, if each individual that they had polled had read the 400-page document we did last year, which proved how California was complicit in chattel slavery, and read the 1,100-page document that we printed out this year, which talked about what reparations should be, there's absolutely no way you would believe that there should be some type of compensation. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. This is GBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. ears. We're unapologetically progressive. GBLA Talk 1580. The City of Los Angeles Emergency Renters Assistance Program will start accepting applications at 8 a.m. on September 19th. The program will provide up to six months of rental arrears to low-income residential renters who are at risk of homelessness due to unpaid rent as a result of COVID-19 or other financial hardship. Learn more at housing.lacity.org. That's housing.lacity.org. When you're young, life is full of choices. Don't let opioids like highly addictive and deadly fentanyl take away your life with just one wrong pill. Addiction is a disease that can affect anyone at any age. But there is a choice to get help for this disease. Find medically proven treatment options, including virtual, at choosemat.org. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. You belong here. You do love to hear from you. Always 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. I want to wish a happy, happy birthday to our colleague, Dr. Melina Abdullah. She is having her birthday today. It is Virgo season. So happy B-Day to you, sister friend. Uh, yeah. Happy B-Day. If you see her, if you hear from her, give her a happy birthday wish. Um, let's go to Fixico, our unofficial, official resident historian of uh, the Freedom Station, KVLA Talk 1580. <laughs> Greetings, Madam President. Thank you for all that you do for the world, and you have been very generous to me. Officially, I'm the founder of the Cimarron Historical Society, a nation of one. However, this Saturday, I participated as a member of our Arthur Study Club in a Founders Day event at the A.C. Bill Brew Library. It was a homecoming for me because I had an 11-year partnership with librarians Rose Mitchell, manager of the Black Resource Center, for and for 10 years before COVID, I presented as the only official Black Indian presenter during Native American Month. My presentations consisted of performance art, group participation, and the Seminole Maroon Peace Bill. Finally, essentially, I have transferred from the greater L.A. chapter of, of the local national bubble Buffalo Soldiers uh, to the National, I'm sorry, organization. And for our author study club, I will be their Seminole Maroon Buffalo Soldier Indian Scout presenter. So I just wanted to let you know, and and and, and I, my history with the our author study club goes back 15 years to Tom Bradley Magnet School and when I was event trooper and with marty johnson so keep up the wonderful job and thank you for all that you have contributed to the community and how generous you've been to me oh that's very kind you've been generous to all of us fixico uh improving our education and 
I think you are probably against the law, as I say, in Florida. So stay in California, would you please? <laughs> Florida, could, it, it's very deadly for me. There's so yeah. much I can tell you about Florida. I, I, I avoid Florida. But anyway, thanks for this time this morning. Absolutely appreciate you. You know, nothing against, I mean, people that live in Florida, except for the governor. But honestly, I, you know, I've had fun there. It's a nice place. But man, they are really trying to erase black history. And um, when I read the book, The um, Warmth of Other Suns, I really began to understand the depth of their racism, their, the white supremacy we always think Mississippi, we think Alabama, you know, the deep, so-called deep South Florida is the deep South. And it's not just the Satan. It's their tradition. Um, yeah. So the five U.S. citizens um, who had been imprisoned in Iran are now on their way back on a flight, according to a senior Biden administration official. Um, it's part of a bigger deal Six billion dollars in Iranian funds that will be unfrozen. Uh, there are some Iranian um, prisoners that were being held by the United States that are being sent back. And this is, you know, I mean, I, I guarantee you, and we can talk about this on Talking po Point Tuesday tomorrow if you want. I guarantee you, Republicans will try to find a way. We'll find a way to make this a bad thing, even though had it been done by he who shall not be named or any Republican president, they would talk about how wonderful it is to free American citizens. And I think that is, you know, that is the truth. Whether it's Brittany Griner or these five folks, um, Imad Sharji, Murad Tabaz, Saimak Namazi, uh, all of them have been in prison for more than five years. You know Five years in an Iranian prison is probably like a lifetime of suffering unto itself. I don't know these guys. I don't know anything about them I, other than that they are U.S. citizens who have been in an overseas prison for more than five years. That's insane. One guy's been in there since 2015. That's eight years. That's hard time. I guarantee you. I've never been to an Iranian prison, but I guarantee you it's hard time. The other two um, haven't been publicly identified yet. Um, but I think this is an important victory and something that the Biden administration said they were going to continue to work on right after Brittany Griner was released, that they would work on freeing Americans imprisoned in foreign institutions all over the world. And there is certainly, there are certainly many more uh, that need to come out. But it's not that they paid $6 billion to get these folks. What they did, it was, uh, that money was already in the pipeline for Iran. All they did is unfreeze it. It's like the lifting up of a, a small piece of the sanctions that we have against Iran in order to gain these people's freedom. I, that's a yes for me. Um, and, you know, I'm not an abolitionist, but I do think that um, prisons here in the United States and around the world tend to be inhumane, especially in places like Iran, tend to be inhumane, tend to be not rehabilitative, tend to be full of violations of civil rights. So if you are going to imprison people, we need to not, we need to not have that be the case. We need to reimagine, reinvent, redesign our carceral systems. And so I think that's something worth celebrating. Boy, he who shall not be named had a rough, rough weekend. <laughs> he had a rough, rough, rough weekend. He might need his own nickname for himself. I know he, he made up Sleepy Joe. I don't know what, we'll, what we can call him. Um, you know, don't know what's going on, Donald. Not sure. Look at that when we come forward. KBLA Talk 1580. Say the quiet part.
Heart Out Loud, KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries says House Republicans are in a battle that is hurting hardworking American taxpayers. Speaking on ABC's This Week, the New York Democrats said that House Republicans are in the middle of a civil war that is also limiting the ability to solve issues on their behalf. He went on to add that House Democrats are going to keep trying to find a common ground with their opponents. Black California lawmakers say there's still some resistance when it comes to black people receiving reparations. One member of the California Reparations Task Force, Reginald Jones Sawyer, who is black, tells NBC News, quote, if each individual that they had polled had read the 400-page document we did last year, which proved how California was complicit in chattel slavery, and read the 1,100-page document that we printed out this year, which talked about what reparations should be, there's absolutely no way you would believe that there should be some type of compensation. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. The City of Los Angeles Emergency Renters Assistance Program will start accepting applications at 8 a.m. on September 19th. The program will provide up to six months of rental arrears to low-income residential renters who are at risk of homelessness due to unpaid rent as a result of COVID-19 or other financial hardship. Learn more at housing.lacity.org. That's housing.lacity.org. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for education as a right, not a privilege. Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science is a private, nonprofit, community-founded, student-centered university committed to cultivating diverse health profession leaders who are dedicated to social justice and health equity for underserved populations. CDU does this through outstanding education, clinical service, and community engagement. Recently, Charles Drew University made history by opening only the fifth medical school at an historically black university. Congratulations, South LA. And congratulations to the dean of the medical school, Dr. Deborah Protho Stiff. CDU is now training doctors and providing $90 million in annual economic benefit to Watts and surrounding neighborhoods. To apply for medical school, get more information, or sign your child up for the Junior Doctors Saturday School Program, visit cdrewu.edu. That's cdrewu.edu. At KBLA, we are dedicated to equity in education and ending healthcare apartheid. And we don't black down. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. What does access mean? Access means owning a home. Access means growing my business. Access means building generational wealth. No matter your goals, U.S. Bank Access Commitment Programs and Initiatives provide the tools and resources to help you reach them. Access your financial goals at usbank.com slash access. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for voting rights. When We All Vote is a leading national nonpartisan initiative on a mission to change the culture around voting and to increase participation in each and every election by helping to close the race and age gap. Created by Michelle Obama, When We All Vote brings together individuals, institutions, brands, and organizations to register new voters across the country and advance civic education for the entire family family and voters of every age to build an informed and engaged electorate for today and generations to come. When We All Vote empowers their supporters and volunteers to take action through voting, advocating for their rights, and holding their elected officials accountable. Please visit whenweallvote.org to stand up for your rights, voting rights. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580.
What's up, party people? It's your favorite MC's favorite rapper, MC Light here. And we're celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, authentically powered by Cadillac. And we're going to take it way back to where it started. It was only fitting that hip-hop began with teenagers at a back-to-school jam in the rec room of a South Bronx apartment complex by an 18-year-old brother. By the way, I'm also sure he had a Cadillac parked outside. He noticed the energy on the dance floor when he switched between two turntables, extending the beats, repeating the breaks, and never losing the rhythms. And that was the birth of hip-hop. And from that moment, it took off. For more on how Cadillac is celebrating hip-hop's 50th, visit Cadillac.com forward slash audacity. When you're young, life is full of choices. Don't let opioids like highly addictive and deadly fentanyl take away your life with just one wrong pill. Addiction is a disease that can affect anyone at any age. But there is a choice to get help for this disease. Find medically proven treatment options, including virtual, at choosemat.org. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique DePrima right now. Right now. Right now, you're back to me. I'd love to hear from you, though. 800-920-1580. 800 So, um, yeah, he who shall not be named, the uh, 45th president of the United States, was making the rounds on the talk shows this weekend. Um. I guess he's campaigning, I'm guessing. Well, he said a lot of unusual things, crazy things, incorrect things. Not that that's anything unusual, but rather than just the typical straight-up lying that he often does, just lying, prevaricating, misstating, misinforming, you know, his usual Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, he seemed a little confused this weekend. And I think, you know, that uh, that's why I said he maybe needs to give himself a nickname. He calls Joe Biden sleepy Joe Biden and talks about Biden being too old. And the Republicans have this talking point that Biden is confused and, and you know, old. And, yeah, he's old. He's, old, you know, but he's only three years older than Trump. <laughs> and, by the way, there's nothing wrong with being old. I am not an ageist, right? I mean, There is wisdom that comes with age. There's experience, all kinds of things. We've said repeatedly, I have anyway, that it's about the ability to do your job, the fitness to do your job, not your age. We have uneducated people at every age. We have dumb people at every age. We have liars of every generation. So it's not just your generations. Can you do the job? Are you ready? Do you have the character, the experience, the ability, the talent? And yes, the health, mental, physical health, mental acuity. Um, (laughs) Example, Trump said something um, this weekend about, um, (laughs) you know, if things keep going the direction they're going, we're going to be in, we're going to end up in World War II. World War II already happened, in case you're confused. Um, you could say maybe he misspoke. He meant World War III, but he's been having these type of slip-ups more and more recently. And given the fact that he typically um, drinks 12 Diet Cokes a day, not known for his workouts, he lives on Diet Coke and fast food. I'm not going to name any names. <sighs> He said re-electing Joe Biden would lead to World War II. World War II was in the 1940s. FYI. At least the American involvement. Okay. That was a long time ago. We've, we've already, World War II has already happened. He also seemed like he thought he was running against Joe Biden. I mean, uh, Barack Obama. Okay. So we can all misspeak. But if you fix it immediately, World War II, 1939 to 1945. Pretty sure that's over already. Um, <laughs> you got to, you know, he's always, it's hard with 
the 45th president because he, he lies so much and he doesn't know history. He doesn't seem to know government. I doubt he could name the three branches of government. It's hard to know when he's lying, when he's prevaricating, or when he seems to be um, having a senior moment. A senior moment, I think, is fine for most jobs. Could be problematic to be a senator or a president if it happens repeatedly. Um, he seemed like he, he was mixing up Biden and Obama, which is, I think, pretty hard to do. I mean, I know that Biden was vice president to Obama, but one of the reasons for that is this, that they're so opposite. Obama was a young black <laughs> president, young for president. So you could say he was 50 when he was elected or whatever, 50 something. But that's young for a president. You can't be president if you're 35 and under. You like, No, you 34 and under. You have to be 35 to be president. And so that's relatively young. Biden is the oldest guy, or at least he will be. I think he is already the oldest guy to to, to uh, serve. It's a tight race with uh, Ronald Reagan. Um, if reelected, he will be the oldest president ever elected. But Trump is right behind him. So to me, you know, it's not about age. It's about competency. I don't believe the 45th president was competent to be president of the United States at 40 or 50 or 60, let alone 77. That's an additional, you know, 27 years of Diet Coke and Burger Palace. <laughs> and that is not good for your brain. You know, if you want to keep your brain, um, you want to keep it well-oiled. He also told another Whopper, ha <laughs> ha speaking of Burger Palace, he told another Whopper, see what I did there, that... Um, Nancy Pelosi turned down troops to protect the Capitol. That he he was at the ready to give her all these troops to protect the Capitol on January 6th, but she turned it down. And of course, she refuted that right away. She said he's always projected, and I agree with that. The former president, the 45th president, if he accuses you of something, that means he's done it. That's what he does. It's the, you know, you probably have a university named after yourself where you rip people off. You know, you probably profited off the U.S. government. I mean, even the, the fact that Hunter Biden is now indicted when we know it should be Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. Somehow he did the Jedi mind trick on Merrick Garland and got him to both sides, both sides, the investigations. You know, and Hunter Biden, I mean, would it surprise me if he was guilty? No. But I think it should be hands off the pre the president's and president's children until they get out of office. Because it can sway elections. Because And then you've got these Hunter Biden charges, which are the kind of charges that, you know, most experts agree the Justice Department typically would not indict on for a first offender. The plea deal went south, and Republicans were looking for that red meat. I don't know if Merrick Garland somehow thinks this is going to make him appear more fair. To me, it, make, it makes you appear politically unsophisticated and gullible. But anyway, you know, I mean, I agree that, well, not only I agree, I said this first, which is that we all have somebody in our family that... Uh, is criminally problematic, <laughs> socially, criminally. You know, everybody got a crackhead in their family somewhere. Everybody got a, if it's not a crackhead, it's somebody doing some stuff, uh, you know, somebody struggling with addiction, somebody not quite having their life together. But Hunter Biden is not the president of the United States. And how does Jared Kushner get to make off with billions from the Saudis <laughs> and no accountability for Trump. That's not one of his four indictments or multiple civil suits. It could be, but it ain't yet. It's a perfect to time to call me, 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. 
Same weekend, he who shall not be named, the 45th president, says it was my decision. He said it was his decision to overturn the 2020 election results. Is that what you want to say on TV when you're facing an indictment for doing just that? We're trying to do just that. Um, that was on Meet the Press. Kristen Welker, their new host, who um, did a fabulous job in that interview. That's not an easy interview. That was like, if you're trying to be, if you're trying to prepare yourself to do tough interviews, watch her. Watch her interviewing the 45th president. You see, you know, I love Caitlin Collins. I think she's very, very competent, but Trump walked all over her. He didn't, he didn't do that with Kristen Welker. He tried, but he, he thought he was, but then he confessed to a crime. <laughs> Anytime you can get a former president to confess to a crime, you did a good job on the interview. <laughs> he said it was his decision to overturn the 2020 election. It was his decision. Why would you say that to try to overturn it? He also apparently wished liberal Jews Happy New Year by saying they destroyed America. If any Latino black or other non-Jewish candidates said that, that would be the end of them. He also did a massive word salad about Roe versus Wade. Look, even though he took away a woman's right to choose, and it's a terrible setback of a, of a, of a liberty that we've had for 50 years, he did that. He should take credit for it. He Instead, he's worried about how it'll affect his reelection, so he's doing word salad lies and trying to you know, mince, you know, mince words about whether, how many weeks you, when your rights end, is it at six weeks or 15 weeks? Do I have right? Do I have agency over my own body or not? Do you support that or not? Stop backpedaling and BSing. Ooh, it was not a good week for number 45. Love to hear your thoughts. 809-20-1580. I'm Dominique DeFrima. It is a messy Monday. We get messy, messy, messy about relationships. Hour three. All that straight ahead. KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More first things first with Dominique DeFrima when we come forward. Hi, this is L.A. City Councilman Curran Price inviting you to the 28th Annual Central Avenue Jazz Fest on September the 23rd from 11 to 7 p.m. For nearly three decades, the Central Avenue Jazz Festival has paid homage to the legendary Central Avenue and its influence on jazz history. Jazz, blues, and Latin jazz will be featured on three stages of music. Co-headlining are Hubert Laws with special guest Eloise Laws and the Billy Childs Quartet featuring Sean Jones. The day includes plenty of food, merchants, and four pavilions focused on youth programming, art, health and wellness, and public resources. Parking is limited, so Metro and Rideshare are recommended. Huber Laws with special guests Eloise Laws and the Billy Childs Quartet featuring Sean Jones. The day includes plenty of food, merchants, and four pavilions focused on youth programming, art, health and wellness, and public resources. For more information, visit centralavjazzfest.com. centralavjazzfest.com. See you on the 23rd. If you're like me, 60 and retired, making ends meet, especially here at the supermarket and drugstore is tough. I'm so blessed to have found BenefitsCheckup.org. It's a free and confidential website from the National Council on Aging that connected me to $1,200 a year in programs that help pay for food, medicine, utilities, and more. Maybe it can help you. BenefitsCheckup.org. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique De Prima right now. Right now. Right now. And yet, he's still tied for the presidency of the United States. That is amazing. But I, I don't think it's going to hold up. Uh, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. You know, some things I hope I am wrong about. But I think this guy, um, I, you know, I think that his support will erode. As these criminal indictments unfold. Because look, if you think back to the January 6th Select Committee, um, when they put together those pieces, everything on video, and then the testimony that we saw in chambers, it really did make a lot of people think. At that time, we started to see public opinion moving a little bit against the former president. 
No, now he's been having all this time to, you know, spend all this money on his defense and go around and hype up his, his, his base his, with his talking points. He's got the perfect foil um, in Joe Biden, and they've done an incredibly skillful job of spreading misinformation on social media, downplaying the achievements of the Biden administration. Look, I am a progressive. Joe Biden was not my first choice. He's still not my first choice. He's a centrist. He's not exciting. He's represents a, a past era. And he represents the most middle of the road part of the Rep- of the Democratic Party which is not my favorite place. I call me a you know an Elizabeth Warren Democrat, a Bernie Sanders Democrat, right? A um Maxwell Smart Democrat, an AOC Democrat, right? Understood, a progressive. But Joe Biden has taken on parts of the progressive agenda which is what he did to win Thank you, black people, specifically black women. But hey, Jim Clyburn, right? And 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 it, and this is something that you know has worked for Democrats. They take on parts of the progressive platform when it when it becomes a problem for them is when they don't deliver on those things. So you're going to take, you know, free college for all, or you're going to take student loan forgiveness, or uh, the greening of American um, infrastructure and green jobs. Uh, those pro-union um, platforms, the things that progressives have stood for, right? And then you're going to bring them over to your sort of centrist talking point tent. And then can you deliver? Well, whether you want to admit it or not, or whether you're listening to the misinformation on social media or not, Biden has delivered on some of the progressive agenda. Some of, not all of. His foreign policy is crap. I give you that. But even though the Supreme Court tried to stop him, like Wiley Coyote, he went around and he's forgiven thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of student loans already. And I guarantee you there's more to come because they are working on how all the different ways the Biden administration can continue to forgive student loans without running afoul of the Supreme Court's stupid decision. Okay, he's delivered on black woman Supreme Court justice, not just a black woman, but a uniquely qualified giant brainiac, scholarly young Young is important on the Supreme Court because they're lifetime appointments, which is ridiculous, but they are right now. So we're playing by the by the rules we have in the game we have until we change that game. He delivered on Ketanji Brown Jackson. He delivered you. You guys wanted a black woman vice president. I wanted her too. Actually, another person who's been subject to a lot of misinformation. If you stop listening to what you heard on TikTok or some talking point from some uniquely unqualified person like Dr. Umar... Uh, you can actually, you will actually see, I mean, even I found myself getting caught up in some of the hype, that Vice President Kamala Harris is way more progressive than she gets credit for being. It's weird. She's got the worst of both worlds. She gets trashed for being a black woman and Asian and being too so-called woke. But then she gets trashed, on the other hand, for not being woke enough for being a prosecutor who allegedly did all these things, put all these black men in jail. That's one of the big raps on her. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you look at her record, Kamala Harris actually pioneered a lot of diversion programs that kept nonviolent drug offenders out of jail. And what's really interesting about it is Kamala Harris didn't start getting targeted for suppo- for her supposed attacks on black men until she got in trouble with the police association for not throwing the book. Now, he was prosecuted, but they felt she should have thrown the book harder at somebody who uh, attacked a police officer. And then those police associations, as they call them, started targeting her with this rhetoric. And now y'all repeat it like it was fact, 
And I'm not saying that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the poster people for progressivism. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is look at the policies, not the talking points on social media, not the rhetoric, not even the identity politics of a lot of the attacks on Harris have to do with she's Indian or, you know, they, they go as far as saying her Jamaican father held slaves, which is actually not true. It's just some made up ish. But, you know, the Internet's good for that. Then y'all repeat it. Follow the money. Consider the source. Don't just repeat stuff. <laughs> Don't just repeat stuff. Please. Um, yes, her mom is from India. Yeah. And she's also a progressive. Her mother. That's the crazy thing. Back to my um, theory about children of the movement. Her mother and her father are both actually activists, <laughs> as we see with so many um, leaders of community-based organizations, a new generation of, of progressive politicians, um, activists, even innovators in business, these socially innovative enterprises. So many of them are coming out of the movement, artists, you know. Uh, the Tupacs, the Money Bees of the world, you look back, ah, uh, even Fonnie Willis, ah, uh, Dad, Black Panther Party. Hmm, not saying she's a Black Panther. We know that she's fairly centrist to conservative, but the consciousness, the ability to move, the ability to analyze and understand our empowerment in the sense that we know that we are meant to have agency. We know that we are meant to be able to speak and move for ourselves and our communities. Self-determination, independent minded, right? The willingness to defy the status quo, to think outside, not just the box, to think outside the lines, outside the borders, outside the prison walls. And this, this isn't new with our generation, you know, it goes, or your generation or the one after that, it goes way back. I always say it, Malcolm X, the, 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 the son of activists, right? Martin Luther King Jr., son of a preacher, community organizer within the church. We pass on these values. We pass on these skills. We pass on the fighting spirit. <laughs> I know for sure I got that from both of my parents. That fighting spirit, not that you need to be that. There's plenty of people that are first generation activists and thank God for you all. But I think, um, you know, it's important to remember when we see these attacks that we unpack. Oh, Biden's old. Yeah, so is Trump. So what? Feinstein's old. Yeah, she probably should retire. Because we can see empirical evidence that she's struggling to do her job, just like Mitch McConnell is. You can't be the minority leader and freeze. I'm sorry, I'm not being ableist and I'm not being ageist. If I was freezing... I probably would have to seek another job. No, we all have brain freezes. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. You saw it like, boom, freeze, 20, 40 seconds of dead air. It's not going to work on radio. How can it work leading one of the most powerful bodies in the known world? That's not about age. That's about what is your ability to lead your fitness for office. Biden may be... He might not be sexy. <laughs> he might not be exciting. He might walk slow. But he's doing a great job. Right? Was he my first choice? No. Will I take the Inflation Reduction Act and be happy for it and run with it? Absolutely yes. That's green jobs. That's union jobs. That's infrastructure. So we don't have to be like Texas without power for days. Our food rotting. So we don't have to be like Flint without water. It's not just Flint. It's all over the country. Bridges collapsing. Water coming out of the faucet brown. This is what the money for the Inflation Reduction Action Act does. It is an action. 
it's a victory. And if Biden won't talk about it, I will, because he might not have been my first choice, but he certainly has delivered on some of the progressive agenda. News, traffic, and sports, and then it's time for Messy Monday, only on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Esther Dillard, and here's the latest from the Black Information Network. A report on the San Diego County taxpayer-funded immigration program is raising some concerns. The Immigration Rights Legal Defense Program provides legal assistance for immigrants at a cost of $5 million bucks since May 2021. The Board of Supervisors was split on the report, with some saying that the county should be using taxpayer money to tackle the fentanyl and homelessness problem. Meantime, in New York City, Black Mayor Eric Adams continues to call on the federal government to do much more to help the city with the migrant crisis. The mayor spoke out again about the drastic budget cuts needed in order to make way for billions of dollars in spending on the migrant issue. And consumer sentiment is down slightly this month. The University of Michigan's early reading for September notes uncertainty over inflation and the economy. And that's the latest. I'm Esther Dillard from the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. A sig alert has been issued in Fountain Valley as a stalled garbage truck remains in the right lane of the 405 North before Magnolia Street, while a 25-minute backup runs heavy from Highway 73. In Anaheim Hills on the 91 West before the 55 Costa Mesa Freeway Interchange, watch for an accident on the right shoulder with heavy traffic from Ware Canyon Road, your Belinda Boulevard Interchange. Also expect heavy traffic as you head through Angels Stadium as the Angels are versing the Tigers tonight at 638, adding to some heavy delays in this area. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. about. Maisha Cairo here with a quick recap for my time at J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Wealth Tour. There were speakers Ian Dunlap, Damon John, Lynn Richardson, MC Light, Don Kennedy, to name a few. Take a listen to what Justin Grant, Community Development Lead at Chase's Advancing Black Pathway, let's see what he had to say. So I'm Justin Grant. I lead Community Development and National Partnerships for J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathway Strategy. And so we're focused on strengthening the economic foundation of black communities, and we're making targeted investments in programs like the Advancing Black Wealth Tour to help us get our tools and resources out to the community to drive sustained impact over time. So when it comes to black and brown people, it sounds like Chase is making it their personal responsibility not only to facilitate these events, but to educate and provide resources. So Mr. Grant, I have to ask, what does wealth building look like for the individual? It's home ownership. It's having that freedom to be able to start your own business and create jobs in your community. And it's having that long-term plan towards retirement having that vision for what you want your life to be and you have the resources to actually live it. I'm Aisha Cairo. Thanks for sticking around. That was my recap from Chase's Advancing Black Wealth Tour. First stop was here in L.A. and they're taking it national. KBLA Talk 1580 is dedicated to empowering our communities by providing progressive talk radio for our audience. We strive to be an intersectional voice for the voiceless. As a Black-owned and operated station, we are committed to highlighting diverse perspectives and creating safe spaces for meaningful dialogue. We believe that everyone has something unique to bring to these political, economic, social, and cultural conversations. And we don't shy away from the hard conversations about current events. We endeavor to be a beacon of hope and understanding while boldly challenging listeners to think more deeply about difficult topics that impact us all. With this in mind, our mission statement at KBLA Talk 1580 is simple. To create an inclusive platform that promotes civil discourse through honest dialogue and encourages personal growth among our listeners so they can become the active agents of change. Our vision is to establish ourselves as the premier radio network with relevant programming across the beloved community connecting people through shared experiences and collective power for lasting impact beyond these challenging times. Charismatic when you got here. You knew about me when you got here. Now you're tripping, girl, it's not fair. And you got my phone in your hands. Questions, not again. Why do we do this when really truth is if i get caught cheating that don't mean i don't love you get them girls i was gone i was gone say it again if i get caught cheating
rather be the girl that cry in a Corolla or <laughs> KVLA Talk 1580. Yes, indeed. Um, it's a messy Monday. We do this the third Monday of every month, fourth Monday of every month. We do Black Marriage Monday, Clean Up the Mess uh, with Ayana and Ayuse Ma'at. It's partly because I just we're always so busy talking politics. We're always so busy trying to make the world a better place that sometimes we forget to focus on our relationships. How do we do better? How do we learn more so we can know more? <laughs> so presumably we can improve our lot in life and our outlook. I'm being joined in studio. What's up, KBLA Talk 1580 YouTube chat? Um, it's time to meet LeGrand Mason Jr., PhD. He's a psychologist, a life and relationship coach, a native of L.A., he lives there. He's in private practice. He's considered a renaissance man because he's got a big old resume and he's highly regarded for his techniques in helping individuals, couples, and families navigate out of their turmoil. He's been on radio, TV, and podcasts, and his latest book is The Five Pitfalls of a Relationship. What They Haven't Told You About Why Your Love Life Stinks. I'm holding it up in case you want to see it. It's available online. Um, Dr. Mason, good morning. Good morning again. Yeah, great to see you. Um, what are the odds within one week I'd have two people named Legrand on the oh, show? Oh, really? Yes. Legrand Clegg, I would yes, take it. Yep, yes, last week he was man. talking about Cleopatra. But look, you um, have a long history of advocating in this space for healthy, happy, joyful, loving, committed relationships. Absolutely. So look why are you here on a messy Monday? Well... Because you have strong opinions about relationships. I have healthy opinions <laughs> about relationships. And one of the things about relationships, they go from the home to your job, uh, your neighborhood, your church, uh, your community, whether you're a volunteer, or you just happen to step into some area, relationships are very important. So when you say relationships, you're talking about anybody from your kid to your pastor. But the book says your love life, why your love life stinks. Exactly. Why does a love life or relationships or the lack thereof stink? Yeah. It's the five pitfalls. Now, there could be many other pitfalls, but I chose five. Vanity. Pity. Pity desperation, entrapment, <laughs> and spite. Okay, well, um, I would add one, but I'm, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> I ain't no expert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even pretend to be an expert. In fact, I would say don't do what I do and you'll probably be doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, I feel like you, you say this is not a how-to book. It's a why book. Yes. Uh, it, what's the difference? The difference is I'm not telling you how to do this. I'm telling you why it wasn't working in your previous experiences. You weren't telling me how to do it. You're just telling me what I'm doing wrong in case I'm, I want to change it. That is correct. <laughs> Most people don't understand the phenomena of why, the genesis of your unsuccess. When your doctor tells you how you got diabetes is because your lack of diet, it could be your DNA, it could be a lot of different things. He doesn't tell you how necessarily, how does it happen? He tells you why it happens. Okay, so you li listed five, uh, five pitfalls. Yes. None of them uh, included the song that Kamal picked. <laughs> 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 if I get caught cheating seems to me cheating is one of the big pitfalls you don't have that on the list cheating is not a pitfall cheating is a behavior or an occurrence or activity or an event that can fall into any of those pitfalls uh, meaning we could be cheating for vanity for desperation <laughs> all of that correct <laughs> um yeah okay pity pity mm. Self, yes. self pity is the biggest problem. Right? Absolutely, I would think. And pity goes both ways. You could fall into a trap of falling for someone who pities you, versus you. How would that work? Having sorrow they, for they another pity, person. They pity me, so they want to date me. 
And the, because they want to shout, oh, she needs this. Oh, I think she needs that. I, I mean, I know women do that. They, they, it's Mr. Fixer Upper. You know, the eye alone can fix it. He's a hot mess, but with me, he'll be wonderful. Yes, yes. Because I am Captain Seva. Uh huh, a person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more female Captain Seva persons, by the way, than men. I uh, honestly agree with you. Yeah. And one of the reasons why uh, that's so important that it goes both ways is because we see more than any any time ever men who start relying on women and the more they play that role of being the oh i need this oh i need to pay my or i don't have this and they find a wonderful woman girl who was willing to fund whatever he wants okay i'm waiting for the end of the sentence because i'm trying to see where you're going with this he plays the role of i need to be pitied okay so you're saying you're not saying he's a gold digger <laughs> which is what men say when we do that. exactly oh you're not absolutely saying he's a gold digger <laughs> but he ain't messing with no broke person correct <laughs> but he can play men will play that role as well and okay. i've seen it and right. i've heard about it and i'm certain you have as well um yeah uh, I know, not to call anybody out, but I've heard that Atlanta's really big on that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the whole city. Yeah, I get mad if you're in Atlanta and call me. I don't care. 809-20-1580. That they're all looking for sugar mama. Sugar mama. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep it over there. Keep it over there in Georgia. We don't need that. But, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against someone helping out another person. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. Why is that bad? I mean, I think right now in social media space, we have a lot of stereotypes going on about what is a male's role, what is a female role, what is a manly man or alpha man, mm -hmm. even though I don't know that that's really even a thing. From what I understand, science says science doesn't go alpha anymore, but I don't know. Well, socially and culturally, we still go there. Right. Well, what the heck is that? Being an alpha yeah. is being control. So... It's fine to Being be control. in control. Hmm. Okay. Does the, it mean you also have to pull your weight or you just have to control things? <laughs> aha. Now you get to another point. And the fact of the matter is when we find a way to be a tyrant in a relationship, who likes that? There's some women that like that. There's some men like to be dominated well, you gotta, by women. You, you got to define tyrant. I mean, some people want a tyrant in bed, but that doesn't mean they want a tyrant in every other aspect yes. of their of their relationship the problem is is that there are boundaries <laughs> there are limitations there are limits right right there should we, be well, yeah. there should be Ideally, in a good yeah. relationship yeah. it should be communicated and that's a key word i mean in define tyrant you know you, does that mean oh you want your your man or woman to beat you up does it mean tell them everything tell how you can spend your money does it mean you know Tie you up to the bedpost when the you want it. it. I mean, what does it mean? What is tyrant? The extreme. The extreme. That's your definition. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's your definition of alpha? Alpha is to be in control. I know at least one self-described alpha who's probably listening. I'm expecting a text any minute. That is not <laughs> going to like that definition. So let's not put labels because tyrants and alphas aren't necessarily male or they don't have to be yeah, dominated that's true. by male or I female. I mean, I know some women that say they're alpha women, females. Yes. Okay. So tyrant. Tyrant is overly. What about leader? <laughs> Can it be leader or does it have to be tyrant? Some leaders have just have enough to be tyrant. An yeah. Authoritarian relationship. Authoritarian. But it doesn't have, that's not the part of. I mean, because I like the so-called things that we call manly, but I don't want a tyrant but to that be honest with work, you to that's be honest with you that's not a pitfall <laughs> unless you fall unless it's considered part of the pity f format okay so we okay. should maybe get back to your pitfalls your pitfalls i gotta ask you this and we'll talk about this when we come forward what um you you have these five pitfalls yes uh in a relationship mm-hmm what they haven't told you about why your love life stinks. That's correct. And we'll go over what these five are. But if you're in a drought, 
which many women and some men that I know are in a drought, meaning there is no relationship, nobody on the horizon, no contenders. How can pitfalls make any difference? You're talking about a pitfall in a non-existent relationship. We'll talk about that when we come forward. And of course, you know, I'm asking for a friend. KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud, loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. about. Maisha Cairo here with a quick recap for my time at J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Wealth Tour. There were speakers Ian Dunlap, Damon John, Lynn Richardson, MC Light, Don Kennedy, to name a few. Take a listen to what Justin Grant, Community Development Lead at Chase's Advancing Black Pathway, let's see what he had to say. So I'm Justin Grant. I lead Community Development and National Partnerships for J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathway Strategy. And so we're focused on strengthening the economic foundation of black communities, and we're making targeted investments in programs like the Advancing Black Wealth Tour to help us get our tools and resources out to the community to drive sustained impact over time. So when it comes to black and brown people, it sounds like Chase is making it their personal responsibility not only to facilitate these events, but to educate and provide resources. So Mr. Grant, I have to ask, what does wealth building look like for the individual? It's home ownership. It's having that freedom to be able to start your own business and create jobs in your community. And it's having that long-term plan towards retirement having that vision for what you want your life to be and you have the resources to actually live it. Hi, am Aisha Cairo. Thanks for sticking around. That was my recap from Chase's Advancing Black Wealth Tour. First stop was here in L.A. and they're taking it national. For all of us, this generation and the next, there is simply no place in our lives for litter. And yet, it's everywhere we look and unfortunately, it does belong to all of us. So let's come together and create a litter-free, clean California once and for all. Remember to properly dispose of your trash and recycling. Secure truckloads with tarps to keep debris from flying out. Clean out your car when you're at the gas station. Take pride in your community by organizing a cleanup event or join a cleanup event near you. Zero litter is the goal. Join us at cleanca.com. That's cleanca.com. Let's do it together. Brought to you by Caltrans. Cleanca.com. Today is August 22nd, 2023 for Deutsch Taco Bell Radio. Spot title E8 Rolled Chicken Tacos Dipping Sauces Radio 30 at ID TCGRCH33000. Stereo model compatible mix with Tupac. What makes Taco Bell's rolled chicken tacos so good? Is it the shredded marinated all-white meat chicken? Well, yeah, obviously. But it's also the three amazing dipping sauces to choose from. Spicy ranch, warm nacho cheese sauce, and house-made daily guacamole. Now, if you need a third reason, their white corn tortillas are fried to golden perfection, which everyone knows is the best kind of perfection. Order rolled chicken tacos on the Taco Bell app. Get one dip for two pack or two dips per four pack at participating Taco Bell stores for a limited time only while supplies last. Spilled your drink? Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up spills quicker. And each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less than the leading ordinary brand. So you can get back to your night. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. Thanks for waking up with Dominique De Prima on KBLA Talk 1580. And you are back with us. Um, me and Dr. Legrand Mason Jr., Ph.D., knows a thing or two about a thing or two about relationships. And what I said, um, you know, if you haven't seen it, the book, The Five Pitfalls of a Relationship, among his other <clears throat> applicable experience for a Messy Monday, he uh, spent time working at a state mental health hospital, um, working as a community college counselor, and also a stand-up comic. Uh, That's why they call you a renaissance man. But look, I said, what if there's no relationship, nobody on the horizon, uh, no real contenders? 
um, I'm not the only one, okay? <laughs> I know a lot of other girlfriends in, that are in that situation. And so what do you, how do these pitfalls apply to us? That is where the desperation pitfall can... All right, hold on just a minute, Dr. Mason. I ain't desperate. <laughs> Some people are. Some people find their way just dropping all of their standards and will go out with anybody. Anybody, lottie dottie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know that's true. I mean, I've considered it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It just doesn't work for me. It, but on the other hand, the thing we most commonly hear from the brothers is, y'all don't give anybody a chance. Y'all just want Mr. Perfecto. I don't think that's true, by the way. I, I, I mean, I know there are some that are like, I won't. Da- I need a six-figure human being mm-hmm. or you know or whatever he has Correct. to have this he has to have that blah 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 and, and men do the same thing she has to have the perfect body the perfect car the perfect credit rating and and, and what about you do you have those things hmm, didn't think so um that's the vanity pitfall okay that is the superficial pitfall that you're going for the exterior and not for the interior of that person there's some wonderful people who work in the most menial job that you could possibly have will be a great lover, will be a great partner, a great supporter, uh, will fit in well with your village, meaning your family, your associates, your affiliates, and so on and so forth. But on the surface of what we're expecting, or some people are expecting, having this wonderful, great job, uh, even a big salary, that's not it. That's vanity. How many times have you gone to someone's home? Maybe your your aunt or your grandparents have this big old furniture piece called a vanity. And what's inside of it is a bunch of nothing. Old <laughs> underwear, old socks, maybe some tools. I mean, so so what are you saying? Like if uh, if I'm in a not in a relationship mm-hmm. and i want to be in a relationship mm-hmm. sit around and wait for that perfect person or don't sit around and wait for that like you on the one hand you said don't be desperate and date just anyone but mm-hmm. on the other hand you said people lower their standards mm-hmm. so what is the what advice are you actually giving do not do those things be careful just sit around and do nothing uh, no you select you get to know people, know exactly what you want. That is within reason, morally. I mean, look, I, I'm not against ask for what you want. I mean, at, you know, I ask for everything. That's fine. Sure. But it's just that I, I think we judge each other really harshly and we project a lot about what we think a person is before we even know who they really are. That's the, the those are cultural faux pas that we tend to fall into. And that's why I picked those five Okay, pitfalls. so you have five pitfalls. Give mm-hmm. me three, five, two, whatever you got. Tips for all of the women like me and men, because okay. I know some men in this situation sure. too. A couple of couple of really good friends of mine, actually. Okay. That are quite, I mean, I think they'd make good boyfriends or husbands. Not for me, for mm-hmm. various reasons. They might be too young. Come on, don't talk smack back there. I see you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but... They are not they are not meeting anyone. What are your tips? So again, this isn't how to date. I know. But what I can suggest is you can be selective but not overdo it. Don't be a serial <laughs> dater. You know what what happens with cereal? We put sugar and milk on it, it gets soggy. It's still sweet, but it's soggy, and then we don't want it, or we don't eat the whole so thing. So what's a cereal dater? You're meaning don't be? you saying don't be fast? Is that what you're saying? Don't just do it. <laughs> just continue to do it and do it and do it, and that's fine going out. But if you're looking for something specific... Don't be a hoe? Is that what you're saying, Dr. Uh, Mason? You know, <laughs> if we're, you know, if we're lying, lying in bed and expecting sheets to always be peeled back, after every date, then yeah, that's a little hoish. Uh, <clears throat> new word coined on. So, <laughs> okay, so let's get back because I don't know. You know, like you said, this is not how to date, but why? But why you're having the issues that you're having now? That's correct. So, what do you think is for those that are in a relationship, um, as you are? Yes. What do you think? Um, you have these five pitfalls. What do you think is the number one? What's the biggest mistake? 
relationship destroyer that you see? Uh, commitment. Meaning lack of? Lack of or an, an understanding because it's got to go both ways. Both of you have to be in some way uh, invested in, a, in the commitment. You also have to have good communication. You have to communicate what you're expecting if you're in a committed relationship. And okay, so let's get into that because when you said commitment, it's like, what's the be- what are you looking for in food? It needs to taste good. Yeah, what are you looking for in a relationship? Most people want commitment. Some don't, Some, but then that's not a relationship. That's dating or a situation exactly. or whatever it is. And no judgment, enjoy. Yes, absolutely. Um, but commitment meaning what? And when you say communicate expectations, how does that look? It sounds, it doesn't always look, if you can hear and you can speak, you're on the right track for communication. But when you get the understanding, ah, then it's diamonds. So give me an example of what you mean by understanding. So I need to be picked up at 8 o'clock and 8 o'clock on the dot. I heard 8 o'clock. Did I listen? Eight o'clock on the dot, I show up eight oh one. You said eight o'clock. I said eight o'clock on the dot. I needed you to get me at eight o'clock on the dot. Didn't you hear me say that? I just heard eight o'clock. I didn't. So 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 commitment means being specific, very specific about what we want, but the other person has to listen. Communication. Communication. Yes. So give me an example of how what kind of um, expectations in what areas? I mean, th- th- our daily lives, a relationship is a million little interactions every day. Absolutely. Uh, is it deal breakers? Is it, you know, is it defining, you know, what is this? Where are we going? The con- You know, the sort of classic question, where are we going? Mm-hmm. Where are we? Um, which a lot of men don't want to hear, and that's, if I'm being honest. That's a leader uh, lead in toward commitment. Right. Where are we going? Right. Uh, and you, but you're saying do it, ask it, ask it, put absolutely. it out there. So there's no disappointment. But not on the first date or the second or the third. Depending upon where your heart is leading you, that's the biggest thing. Do you understand? <clears throat> that do sounds you airy fairy and nonspecific. Yes, but <laughs> that's us culturally. Right. We're we're trained in that in novels. Magazine articles, television shows, movies. This is where we we're always asking that question. And shout out to Flossie P. Yeah, shout out to Flossie P. He's another big fan of yours. What's up, Flossie P? <laughs> okay, but so, um, and you know, in this, you kind of align with another one of my Messy Monday guests, my friend Venus Thomas, who's been married. 50 years, happily, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, is that she said they laid out their expectations in the beginning. Everything from, I don't like to go to the grocery store to, um, you know, you can, you know, you can have this many female friends or whatever (laughs) their deal is. Mm -hmm. I like that. Because if that's how you communicate, wonderful. I've had couples that come to me and and one, two in, in particular, they could use every six letter 12 letter word in the book toward each other but one called the other one unctuous and that created a big myth riff in their relationship and i got hired behind that because they didn't understand that 50 cent word that came out of their partner's mouth and felt very attacked like you could, they could be called a compound mother word, but they were, they were okay with that. But yes. anxious was a problem. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Because they didn't know what it meant. It didn't know what it meant. A and dictionary it, could have solved that. Instead, they paid for a shrink. But then they Probably felt thousands. They also felt like they were being belittled. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, but didn't feel belittled by being called a four legged animal female <laughs> animal that's fine just don't call me unctuous mm-hmm, exactly so what you're saying is it, it's what what triggers or affirms Correct. that individual what their understanding with each other is and that's i have four tenants my when my wife and i have 51 years hi sonia when we do workshops and we do seminars we talk about four tenets commitment communication intimacy 
and what we call nobility, which essentially is just um, respect. And we will continue this conversation after news, traffic, and sports, only on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. I'm Esther Dillard, and here's the latest from the Black Information Network. A report on the San Diego County taxpayer-funded immigration program is raising some concerns. The Immigration Rights Legal Defense Program provides legal assistance for immigrants at a cost of five million bucks since May 2021. The Board of Supervisors was split on the report, with some saying that the county should be using taxpayer money to tackle the fentanyl and homelessness problem. Meantime, in New York City, Black Mayor Eric Adams continues to call on the federal government to do much more to help the city with the migrant crisis. The mayor spoke out again about the drastic budget cuts needed in order to make way for billions of dollars in spending on the migrant issue. And consumer sentiment is down slightly this month. The University of Michigan's early reading for September notes uncertainty over inflation and the economy. And that's the latest. I'm Esther Dillard from the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. A sig alert has been issued in Fountain Valley as a stalled garbage truck remains in the right lane of the 405 North before Magnolia Street, while a 25-minute backup runs heavy from Highway 73. In Anaheim Hills on the 91 West before the 55 Costa Mesa Freeway Interchange, watch for an accident on the right shoulder with heavy traffic from Ware Canyon Road, Yorba Linda Boulevard Interchange. Also expect heavy traffic as you head through Angels Stadium as the Angels are versing the Tigers tonight at 638, adding to some heavy delays in this area. The City of Los Angeles Emergency Renters Assistance Program will start accepting applications at 8 a.m. on September 19th. The program will provide up to six months of rental arrears to low-income residential renters who are at risk of homelessness due to unpaid rent as a result of COVID-19 or other financial hardship. Learn more at housing.lacity.org. That's housing.lacity.org. The Los Angeles Urban League helps African American and others in underserved communities achieve true social parity, economic self-reliance, and civil rights. For over 100 years, Los Angeles Urban League has ensured our communities have access to careers with living wages, opportunities to start and grow businesses, and clear pathways to personal and professional growth. Programs like BizCamp, Construction Career Academy, Bob Business Ready and BWARP, the Black Wealth Attainment and Retention Program are examples of the ongoing events designed to make our centennial mission to rebuild Black Wall Street right here in L.A. a reality. To sign up for our newsletter or to support the Los Angeles Urban League with your time, talents, and donations, visit laul.org. That's laul.org. The Los Angeles Urban League is a proud sponsor of Urban Family Focus, Saturdays at 7 a.m. on KBLA Talk 1580. Hi, this is L.A. City Councilman Curran Price inviting you to the 28th Annual Central Avenue Jazz Fest on September the 23rd from 11 to 7 p.m. For nearly three decades, the Central Avenue Jazz Festival has paid homage to the legendary Central Avenue and its influence on jazz history. Jazz, blues, and Latin jazz will be featured on three stages of music. Co-headlining are Hubert Laws with special guest Eloise Laws and the Billy Childs Quartet featuring Sean Jones. The day includes plenty of food, merchants, and four pavilions focused on youth programming, art, health and wellness, and public resources. Parking is limited, so Metro and Rideshare are recommended. Hubert Laws with special guests Eloise Laws and the Billy Childs Quartet featuring Sean Jones. The day includes plenty of food, merchants, and four pavilions focused on youth programming, art, health and wellness, and public resources. For more information, visit centralavjazzfest.com. Centralavjazzfest.com. See you on the 23rd. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for education as a right, not a privilege. Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science is a private, nonprofit, community founded, student centered university committed to cultivating diverse health profession leaders who are dedicated to social justice and health equity for underserved populations. CDU does this through outstanding education, clinical service, and community engagement. Recently, Charles Drew University made history by opening only the fifth medical school at an historically black university. Congratulations, South LA. 
congratulations to the dean of the medical school, Dr. Deborah Protho Stith. CDU is now training doctors and providing $90 million in annual economic benefit to Watts and surrounding neighborhoods. To apply for medical school, get more information, or sign your child up for the Junior Doctors Saturday School Program, visit cdrewu.edu. That's cdrewu.edu. At KBLA, we are dedicated to equity in education and ending health care apartheid. And we don't black down. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Boldly taking talk radio where it has never gone before. New vistas. New voices. New views. New visions. New victories. We're KBLA Talk 1580, and we're taking public media black. Black, black, black. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. Hello, Joe, you're up. Welcome. We're big unapologetically mouth. progressive, and we don't black down. I don't mean to mislead her But if she believed every word that I said I'd take it all back She playing follow the leader But that doesn't mean that I ain't gotta leave her Oh no She say she could give me what I need I should make her more than company I swear she got that fire But does it compare to Cali? No so happy when she's next to me Thought she had me, baby, really thought she had me Now she feeding for the rest of me But that isn't in the recipe KBLA Talk 1580, that's my pretend boyfriend, sir <laughs> My imaginary boyfriend uh, Dr. LeGrand Mason Jr. is with us. The five pitfalls of a relationship. What they haven't told you about why your love life stinks. And why it's not in the doggone recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so um, you have five pitfalls. I want to just go over them quickly so we get through them all before the show is over. Yes. You don't have to go too in-depth. And then you can build from there. So first of all, you say vanity. Vanity. The well, superficial pitfall. Meaning that it is it is based on the outward appearances and conception of a person. You're talking about what how what he drives, how big her booty is, um, although yes, that could have and how other big purposes. His feet are right, right, right. Feet, hands, all that. Or it's so it's just about why is that bad? I mean, I think everybody's vain, right? Because when even though it's a sin, absolutely, I, I know, but, you know, absolutely. <laughs> the the problem is once you get to know the person on the inside, there's a disappointment that. They're not a good person after all. So the inside not matching the outside. The correct. And we've built a whole story around the outside. Yes. Okay. Expectations he, of the out, from the outside. Expectation versus reality. Correct. Yeah. All Ooh. right. You're going to be my, my co-author in the next book. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. How to mess up your love life like Dominique. No. Nah. Like Dr. Legrand Mason. Uh, okay. Um, pity. Pity is the feel sorry for pitfall right when the the ability to be sympathetic becomes extreme you start allowing someone to do things that oh you know i'll help them out oh they came from a bad so you're le- you're making excuses for you're them? making excuses okay. for them and for what about for yourself i remember jewel diamond taylor talks about a pity party you know and mm-hmm. how that can sort of create this momentum of you know uh, giving up energy or yeah and then you settle Right. It leads right into you. You're you're desperate. Yeah, you, know, you start yeah, feeling yeah. sorry for yourself. There's also this dynamic. I don't know if this goes under pity, but you made me do this. You made me cheat. You made me this. You made me feel bad. You made me lo- a loser. But in reality, no one can make you anything. Right. That's correct. We That's make correct. ourselves. You, how you respond to a thing is your choice. That's part of. I'm, repi- I'm reminding myself of that. Right now. <laughs> How I respond to a See, thing is my now choice. Now you know why. 
And that's the biggest problem. When people find themselves eventually out of a relationship, mm -hmm. they don't realize, they don't take the time to realize why did that go wrong? I mean, but to be honest with you, they say one of the standards is would you date yourself? I would absolutely date myself. I'm amazing. I'm generous. I'm kind. I'm fun. No. Oh. Yeah, I'm a bit of a pain in the ass, but I mean, not that much. When you look at cost-benefit ratio, I would absolutely date myself. Okay. And that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. That wasn't one of the five. <laughs> FYI. Uh, desperation. Desperation is the settle for any body pitfall. Mm. Okay. I mean... <laughs> Because it, come, uh, it could do, come from being, it, it could come from. I was going to give some examples, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that today. Not today. You heard what I said earlier uh -huh. about a two, you would date, you would take on, go to bed with a two foot one eyed monkey with 17 toes. You weren't talking about me specifically. No, I'm giving that right. as people will be. See that's so, that's the beauty right there. I was to come on, does that mean that's that's cool? <laughs> you're yeah. No, I mean right. So you're saying come on, you're saying you were attracted to their inner beauty, and so you didn't care about the seventeen. Yeah, hours. there you go. See that is the essence. That, or maybe you have a toe fetish, and seventeen is better and than ten. You feel, hey, you know, and you can cut off the other five if you like ten. Or, the, or, or block them out. So, but what you're but you're talking about just desperation in terms of going for something that you don't like. You know, it's not going to work. Yeah. But you just don't want to be the you know the third wheel or the sixth wheel or or that. You're odd dating number. Timothy Chalamet when you really want to be with Travis, for example. I mean, just an example. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, like you're settling for something that's not your type, that's not your ideal. Correct. And uh, back to Jewel Diamond Taylor, I don't know why she's on my mind today, but she always said desperation is a scent that no one likes. Mmm, I like that. It's a perfume that, that, that attracts no one. That's correct. Mm hmm That is correct. But, I mean, there, I think, you know, uh, there's a fine line between being desperate and stating what you want and being, you know, being out front about it, right? Sometimes when we find something someone that really engages us and we find they've got qualities that are not on the outside that's where we should be going mm, like Kamal right he said what if I really like the person I'm not mad at that yeah but I think desperation Kamal would be if you got with the person that you didn't really like just because you didn't want to be alone a lot of people are there afraid to be alone <laughs> that's your that's a whole decade <laughs> yeah but people be doing that in the 40s 50s 60s and absolutely beyond. absolutely can't have an empty bed well or an empty you know whatever all human being back to human being entrapment what is that that's your that's your fourth yes. principle so entrapment is when you get caught up in a relationship uh -huh. and you use things like getting pregnant on purpose so you can hold on to that person, uh, getting that person pregnant so you can continue to be in their lives. Uh, you're, you've got a cell phone bill. If you leave me now, uh, you're going to have to pay your own cell. Right, that financial lording over of a person. Correct. Yeah, there's other things people do too. They threaten self-harm. They, you know. That I, is correct. I Not can't. only self-harm, but harm the other person. Right, right. Yes. Intimate partner violence. Mm-hmm. And, of course, on paper, we all know that's bad. But in reality, people get caught up for all kinds of reasons that are borderline, if not full-on entrapment. How do you even extract yourself from that? Whether well, you're the entrapper or the entrapee. <laughs> everybody needs to be safe. Right. Everyone needs to right. be safe emotionally, physically, legally, the whole nine yards. And that kind of trickles down into spite where you fail to yield which is your number five your that's fifth, the fifth your one fifth, and uh, they don't have to go in pitfall order pitfall of a relationship spite is the pitfall where you fail to yield all the signs all right we'll talk about spite 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 a lot of things go under that category absolutely uh, we'll look at that when we come forward on kbla talk 1580 She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominic DePrima when we come forward.
Hi, this is L.A. City Councilman Kern Price inviting you to the 28th Annual Central Avenue Jazz Fest on September the 23rd from 11 to 7 p.m. For nearly three decades, the Central Avenue Jazz Festival has paid homage to the legendary Central Avenue and its influence on jazz history. Jazz, blues, and Latin jazz will be featured on three stages of music. Co-headlining are Hubert Laws with special guest Eloise Laws and the Billy Childs Quartet featuring Sean Jones. The day includes plenty of food, merchants, and four pavilions focused on youth programming, art, health and wellness, and public resources. Parking is limited, so Metro and Rideshare are recommended. Huber Laws with special guests Eloise Laws and the Billy Childs Quartet featuring Sean Jones. The day includes plenty of food, merchants, and four pavilions focused on youth programming, art, health and wellness, and public resources. For more information, visit CentralAveJazzFest.com. CentralAveJazzFest.com. See you on the 23rd. When you're young, life is full of choices. Don't let opioids like highly addictive and deadly fentanyl take away your life with just one wrong pill. Addiction is a disease that can affect anyone at any age. But there is a choice to get help for this disease. Find medically proven treatment options, including virtual, at choosemat.org. At KDLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. Hello, Joe, you're up. Welcome. We're unapologetically progressive, and we don't black down. What is that sound? Okay, so we're talking about the five pitfalls of a relationship. Why, what they haven't told you about your, how your, why your love life stinks. Maybe your love life doesn't stink, but uh, we can still help you avoid some pitfalls that you don't need. You don't want it to start stinking. I know there's a lot of people out there in happy relationships. They just don't, they don't get on the cover of the magazine. Nobody wants to hear about, you know, Halle Berry's happy in her relationship. I mean, I'm happy for her. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you guys. Yeah. I mean, there are celebrities out there that do the serial dating thing. You know, you'll see them one year with somebody and then another year with somebody else and they seem extremely happy. Those are the folks that really need my book or call me as their... Because, well, you can't judge by celebrities because it's their job to seem happy, even if they're miserable. Yeah, even if, I mean, if they're miserable Mm -hmm. and we find out later, you know, they were, yeah. But in their personal life, they deserve also to be genuinely happy. Everybody does. Yes. Yes. But that's a journey, not a destination, right? Spite. Why is spite a pitfall? Spite is when you have all of the warning signs that this is going nowhere fast. This relationship. That relationship. And you decide you're going to stay in it anyway. I've had clients who, coming out of the relationship, because I do assuagement as well. I I do separation counseling. I see. And they'll say that their sister told them, you seem like a nice person, but... You really, you really don't know her or him the way I do, and you need to get out. Okay, so you're talking about at the end of a relationship. What about spite inside a relationship? I feel like I know some people where they're actually jealous of their partner, not for talking to someone else, but jealous of their partner's success mm-hmm. or their popularity, their social skills. Mm-hmm. Inside of a relationship, yes. it's like they're competing with each other and they're hating on each other. Is that a part of spite? That's not a spite. What is that? That is just jealousy and ego. So back to the um, vanity thing. Mm-hmm. That's exactly that goes correct. Under that's under that's under vanity. That will also destroy a relationship. It does contribute to destroying a relationship. I feel like you know if you if you are really love a person, then you want them to succeed, and even if it's for selfish reasons, because if they succeed, it's going to help you. Now you're a unit while you're together, in some regard. No, absolutely. That that's not see. That's where there's no pitfalls. Right. There's a commitment and a communication that it leads through a wonderful sense of intimacy that is not neither physical or sexual. And it leads to that noble ability for you to have a king and a queen together. A king and a queen or a queen and a queen or a king and a king or... 
a partridge in a pear tree, whatever y'all got going on. A duke and a duchess. We want y'all to be happy. Or a duke and a duke and a duke and a... You know, I, people got configurations and situationships. That is true. And I don't care as long as y'all be happy. But what would you say of those five is the biggest one, the biggest pitfall? What do you see in your practice taking people down yeah. the most? It really starts with the superficial portion of it. Vanity? Vanity, because it, it essentially it has no depth to it. How do we check ourselves for that? See, then I would be getting into a how. So I okay, will help so, you with so that. The, no, I'm, I'm so good the why with that. is just your relationship fell apart because vanity. Right. And the purpose of this book is now go think about it and figure it out. Correct. See why <laughs> it's been falling, <laughs> Thanks, Dr. falling Mason. apart. <laughs> I tell you, I can tell you why you're jacked up, but I can't tell you See what to do about it. My book is not shrink. for people in committed <laughs> and married relationships. Uh -huh. This is for those individuals who have been falling apart in previous relationships. You, sh you should know why. And there's a parable of Alvin that talks about where a buddy of mine, to come to my house, to get there quickly, start running through other people's backyards. He didn't know what the back of my house looked like, so he just took a guess. In most folks' backyards in the 50s, we have dogs, right? So if you're going to run through somebody's backyard who had dogs, you're going to step in what? Yeah. Yes. Alvin did this numerous times, and he'd run, and he'd go to these homes and knock on the door looking for me first, but he knew some of the other kids. And as soon as he saw the other kids when the mom would open the door, he'd run in. Alvin had that on his foot. Can you imagine the rugs, the carpets, even the hardwood floors that mom started seeing because Alvin brought it in. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, because he was so impatient. He was running through this muck and brought it with him everywhere he went. And that's what happens in our relationship. We step in poop. We step in poop Alvin and we poop shoe. And when we and when we step in it, we bring it along. We have to start looking where we go. Okay, I'm trying to follow your metaphor here. So <clears throat> you're saying we're bringing in crap from our old relationship. We bring in sometimes often we will bring in crap from our previous relationships. Uh yeah, I think Erica Badu do wrote a song about a bag lady. Mm. You know, but Ba men do it too. Oh, it's everybody. Uh, and I know you're going to say, oh, it's not a how-to, blah, 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 blah. So it once we've read this book and we say, oh, I did this, 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 and this, this, or this, 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 and that happened to me. Honestly, I think a lot of times we tend to blame the other person. Oh, they had vanity. They did entrapment. Mm -hmm. You know, they had spite. They were desperate. They had a pity party. Instead of looking within, so assuming we're advanced enough in relationship school to look within and say, what was my part in this? Since you're not going to tell us what um, to do, you're just going to tell us what we did wrong. I want to ask you when we come forward, before we hand off to Tavis Smiley, what are you suggesting we might do next? And where do we go from here? Uh, it's a messy Monday. My opinionated <laughs> friends take on relationship. And it's only on KBLA Talk 1580. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Boldly taking talk radio where it has never gone before. New vistas. New voices. New views. New visions. New victories. We're KBLA Talk 1580. And we're taking public media black. Black, black, black. I'm Dominique De Prima. We can all fall into the trap of mindlessly spending sometimes. I know I do it. But one tip for staying on track is when you have an impromptu purchase that comes up, try making a habit of taking a quick look at your bank account balance before you buy it. It's not just about seeing how much you have in your checking account. Just looking at your account might put the urge to make that impulse purchase into perspective and help you make better choices that'll benefit you for the long term. Whatever your financial goals, U.S. Bank Access Commitment Initiatives can help support you in reaching them. Access your financial goals at usbank.com slash access. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
conversation continues right now, right now, right now with right now. Dominique De Prima on First Things First. Things first. first. Dr. LeGrand Mason, PhD. We're starting off your Monday. It's a messy Monday. My attempt to make sure we spend at least some time in our lives getting better at this relationship thing, the five pitfalls of a relationship, what they haven't told you about, why your love life stinks. The author is with me in studio, Dr. LeGrand Mason, Jr., PhD. Where can we find the book? How can we follow you? Uh, Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, It is available on Barnes & Noble and Amazon, and Apple Books as well. Uh, If you're interested in uh, giving me a call to talk about it, uh, I have a toll-free number of 866-773-4303. Perhaps in your own personal life, you, you need to delve into the five pitfalls for yourself, and I'm available at 866-773-4303, or just Google me, Dr. LeGrand Mason, Jr., All right, so we let's say we've been earnestly taking notes and meditating on all these five pitfalls and and figuring out what was wrong, and we're we're mature enough and experienced enough to know it's not all the other person, right? A lot of it has to do with us. Where do we go from here? So when we're able to self-evaluate and be honest with ourselves, B one hundred. The chances are very good. We're, we're going to morph ourselves into much better relationships and perhaps even finding that love of your life, like I did. I have the love of my life. My wife, Sonia, we've been together since 1972. Hi, Sonia. Thank you. And uh, I was fortunate. I was bl- more than fortunate. I was blessed. And through thick and thin, rich, poor, I mean, between us, we've had, we have six college degrees, six children, nine grandchildren. Uh, We found it. That was part of it. There was self-realization and finding myself included in the 13 years it took me to do this book to realize where was I falling apart? Where was I coming up short? In fact, I mentioned, I, I, I make mentioned in the book about the ladies that I tried to date and romance and thank you for allowing me the little bit of time to find myself and practice my romanticism. Mm. So you're really adamant about this not being about dating tips, but about understanding what we did wrong, what went wrong in our prior relationships. You made it clear. If you would date yourself, look for someone who would date you. Well, I just okay, okay, but I mean, a lot of people that would date you, you might not want to date. I mean, you're married, but you know what I'm saying. No, exactly. If we can find someone and that we feel will be compatible <laughs> with us, and it doesn't happen overnight, it's not like Alka Seltzer, we drop it in. I'm just laughing because <laughs> it made me think of Bruno Mars. You deserve to be with somebody's fly as me. <laughs> Uh, that sounds a little rough. It sounds like it's uh, not too bad, but you also, as he would say, you leave the door open. Yeah, you gotta leave the door open. <laughs> that's for sure. So, I bet it sounds like I guess what I was going, where I was going with that is, it's really about reflecting on what we're doing, where we're going, what we are um, practicing, more so than a bunch of tips for how to impact the other person and understanding what works and don't. Stop doing what didn't work. <laughs> Sounds simple enough. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, what, one place to start the five pitfalls of a relationship. As you said, you could find it on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and wherever you get your books. Um, and I guess you're fine with all the lovelorn folks calling you 866 773 4303. 4303, correct. Dr. LeGrand Mason, thank you so much for being with me this morning. It's been my pleasure to be with you. We It was a decade ago or so that we did meet on, in another radio world. Absolutely. And, and then, you're still as lovely today as you were back then. Oh, that's very kind of you. Hey, look, I got a new reading assignment, The Five Pitfalls. Um, once I read the book, you'll have to come back. Maybe you'll bring Miss Sonia. Aha. Now that will be a show. Thank you so much <laughs> for being you. with us. You know the deal. It's a Monday, so Tavis is coming on hot. He's got a strong show for you this morning, as always. He is right after me. I want to thank you to everybody who came out to Contract Ready this weekend. What a powerful event. 
I want to thank everyone who came out to Fly Compton. If you haven't checked them out, they're helping black aviators get in the business. You know, make a donation. Go see what they are all about. What an amazing organization. I'm Dominique DePrima. History is now, and we are making it together until tomorrow. One love. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Esther Dillard, and here's the latest from the Black Information Network. A report on the San Diego County taxpayer-funded immigration program is raising some concerns. The Immigration Rights Legal Defense Program provides legal assistance for immigrants at a cost of five million bucks since May 2021. The Board of Supervisors was split on the report, with some saying that the county should be using taxpayer money to tackle the fentanyl and homelessness problem. Meantime, in New York City, Black Mayor 